This Kelloland Living segment is sponsored by JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars, an enhanced adult beverage experience in Sioux Falls. As a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? A doctor? An astronaut? A firefighter? Our guest in today's Across the Table segment always dreamed of being a police officer. And while that choice wavered a bit when it came time to select a major in college, he never strayed far from his original path, and today he's the chief of the Sioux Falls Police Force. I caught up with him recently at JJ's Wine Spirits and Cigars. John, thanks for coming out here to JJ's. Thanks for having me. Okay, I've got a peach whiskey sour. <laughs> you don't. Uh, obviously, <laughs> there's some rules that prohibit that, so I've got a Shirley Temple. Okay. All right, there you go. Cheers. Thank Cheers. Thank you for joining yeah. me. Just as delicious as I remembered it. So okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you were a kid, did you want to grow up and be a police officer? Yeah, growing up, every um, five-year-old thinks they want to be a police officer. And so I grew up, people would ask me what I want to be. It's either police officer or firefighter. And as I grew up, that just kind of stuck. Like it never quite faded away. And, and just, I always kind of set my eyes on that. And in high school, I'm like, yeah, I think I want to be a police officer when I grow up. But of course you get to college and you got to do some other stuff first. So I, I chose to be a business major, but I found my way back to law enforcement. And you've got a twin brother yep. and a younger brother, and they're yep. not following you in the same no, field. No, no. So I grew up with a, a twin brother, which is a really cool experience to have, and then a little brother, which you don't always say that about your little brother, but he, he's okay now. Back then, he wasn't so good. But they're both doctors, and so people always would ask, well, what happened to you? you got two yeah. brothers that are doctors. You're a cop. I'm like, well, I got hit in the head a lot playing football. <laughs> the, the whole math and science portion of my brain just completely left me, but but they still have it. So twin brother though, does he ever use that to his advantage? Like if he gets pulled over, is he like, do you not recognize me? Well, I you am know, the... we are identical, so we look pretty close, but it was confusing for people in the hospital because officers would see him walk through and they'd be confused as to why all of a sudden I was moonlighting as a doctor or the nurses would see me walk in in uniform and get really confused. So like I said, as twins, you never purposely you know, switch things up because people screw up your names on their own without any help. Your love for this community is deeply rooted, right? Yeah. Born in Central Sioux Falls, went to Longfellow Lowell, Axtell Park, Lincoln High School. At the end of high school, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stay here and go to college because my dad taught at University of Sioux Falls, so I went there and and basically just love this community, love being from Sioux Falls, and proud to be from here. And fun fact, as a kid, I had a Argus Leader paper out and a shopping newspaper out, and then uh, my first neighborhood I patrolled as a police officer was my paper out as a kid. So it's kind of a an interesting full circle there that came came through. Did you ever judge whoever was doing the paper route at the time when you would go by? Always. Always. Yes. It's, it's my secret time. skill. I am excellent at throwing a newspaper, and I still am. <laughs> uh, if there was a professional league for that, I would have gotten pro, but there wasn't, so it got me in law enforcement instead. So now, though, you're the chief of police. Yes. So that's a, that's a big job. That's a really big job. Yep. Not where I thought I'd end up. When I first got hired, I just wanted to uh, have a, a profession that I felt filled a purpose for me, felt a calling. You know, after 16 years, chips fell where they may, and I found myself in a position where this is something I felt like could serve my community in this position. In today's political climate, it can sometimes be an even trickier job, I think, maybe. Sometimes yeah. people probably have a, a perception coming into it of what your thoughts are on an idea. And I think you have a different, unique approach to the law enforcement's relationship with social justice issues and community building. Yeah, I think many times we try to have this conversation on a national level. But throughout our country, everything is so remarkably different. Each community is different. And we can't really take a broad topics and really apply them across the board. We have to look at our community and be willing to listen to each other, talk to each other, say, hey, here's what's different, here's what's the same. But really, how are we focusing this on a local level and making sure that we're building the strongest relationships possible to really work through some of these issues? Because really, if we just yell at each other from our corners, we don't get very far. We, we get far by promoting understanding and collaborating and coming together. Something you hear a lot of times is a response to Black Lives Matter being, you know, Blue Lives Matter, or like that they are like they can't happen at the same time. So what's your response yeah, to that? Yeah, we tend to go back to like polarizing issues, and even if we look at like the defund the police movement, mm -hmm. you know, there's just a lot of rallying points or people that wanted to talk about. Well, really, a lot of times there's there's space for conversation in between, and it's not an all or none conversation. And I think we've seen 
when it comes to certain topics, you know, like defunding the police. Well, now we're refunding the police in some areas because it's not as simple as just identifying one issue. It's what's the really core issues in the community and making sure we're building understanding and talking to each other. Knowing everything I know about police work primarily from television shows, it seems yeah, which like is one hundred percent spot accurate. on. Yeah, seems yeah. really dangerous. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's uh, you take for granted. Um, you know the job itself and, and you can go through periods of complete boredom followed by as they say sheer terror right there's just you know certain things that happen and you know when you choose to sign up for this profession you have to be okay with the fact that your days off are going to stink and that there's an element of danger but in many ways um, it's important for us to be there to serve the community and, and take that challenge head on. You're now also looking at this through the lens of a father who's raising yeah. children in our community. How has that shifted your perspective? Well, the reason, and again, I'll tell anybody who asks, the reason I've always wanted to stay here is because this is where I want to raise my kids. And as we see people who are coming into the community, we hear a lot of things that they're saying is like, yeah, this is where I want to start my family or this is where I want to raise my family. So from my perspective as a law enforcement officer, like, yeah, we want to make sure that we, we stay true to that, that we are protecting that feeling and making sure that, that the residents of Sioux Falls keep that going. What do I not know? Because I've never stepped in the shoes of a police officer that, that you wish more people that didn't do your job knew. I think just the quality of the people that I work with. I think people sometimes have misconceptions about law enforcement. And I know when I first came to the police department, you don't really know what you're going to expect. And I quickly realized that I work, worked at that time with the best people I've ever met. Like not people who did things for the right reason, who wanted to serve their community. And I continue to be impressed by the people that we employ and what they do every day. How hard is it to be every little kid's hero? You know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, because you go somewhere and like I said, just like I was when I was a five-year-old, like everybody wants to be a police officer, a firefighter. Uh, but you know, you just want to make sure that, that you build that positive interaction with them. If they take, come up to you and want a picture, I want to say hi because we want people to feel encouraged and supported to be in law enforcement and I think that starts as an early age and I think you'll see some stuff from us in the future about how we reach out to young kids in particular middle schoolers and say hey we want you to be part of our police department we want you to represent your community and we want you on our, our police force. You know every profession around the world can look back over years and say we did these things wrong before or we've yeah. learned more now and we're going to change based on the more information we have but you tend to have to do it on a really public stage when something yep. changes, so how? Well, I, th I think it's, it's a great question because if you think you have a finished product, product in anything you do, you're, you're really opening yourself up for failure. Things that we do, whether it's business, whether it's industry, whether it's law enforcement, we have to constantly be evaluating our practices and see as the community and the world changes around us how we're changing our, our techniques, our tactics, and our policies to make sure we're following industry best practices and standards. <laughs> when you think you have everything figured out, like I said, it's probably time for you to retire because you have to constantly be learning and evaluating. All right, well, thank you for sitting down with me. One yeah, final cheers. Thanks. Cheers to your sideburns, I think we have to say, yeah, right? Yeah, to famous, my sideburns and my, my Shirley Temple. <laughs> and your Shirley uh, Temple. Temple. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. At JJ's, they like to say they provide an enhanced adult beverage experience, and we think that's just the perfect way to sum up the great food and drink and the great people you'll run into at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. They're located at 3000 West 57th Street in Sioux Falls. You can find out more about their specials and events by checking out their website at jjswine.com. And don't forget to check out the Boozy Bakery when you shop JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Whether you're looking for something special to go with a dry red wine or need a sweet treat to pair with a pint, the kitchen is open and they've got plenty of desserts to choose from that will help create a special pairing for any occasion. The Boozy Bakery also has online ordering available and they will be happy to deliver your order curbside.